join us on Patreon, and become part of our journey to uncover history's untold stories. Your support helps us create in-depth content, bring hidden narratives to life, and keep history alive for everyone. From the quiet hills of Greenbrier County, West Virginia, a place where the mountains fold into one another like guarded secrets, emerged a mind that would one day guide the trajectory of a nation's ambitions beyond Earth. Long before rockets thundered into the sky and astronauts became symbols of American destiny, there was data, handwritten, recalculated, checked, rechecked, and defended by a black American woman whose brilliance was sharpened under the weight of segregation. The story of the black American researcher whose data built a federal program is not simply a tale of numbers and equations. It is a story of endurance, intellectual courage, and the unseen labor that quietly constructed one of the most powerful governmental enterprises of the 20th century, the United States Space Program. Catherine Coleman Goebel Johnson was born in 1918 into a country rigidly divided by race and gender, a nation that rarely imagined black women as architects of its future. Yet even as a child, numbers spoke to her with clarity and intimacy that set her apart. She counted everything. Steps, dishes, stars. Mathematics was not merely a subject. It was a language through which the world revealed its structure. Her parents recognized that her gift could not be contained within the limited educational opportunities available to black children in rural West Virginia. The family made extraordinary sacrifices so she could attend schools that matched her intellect, setting a pattern that would define her life brilliance advancing in spite of barriers erected to halt it. By the age of 18, Johnson had graduated from West Virginia State College, one of the historically black colleges that quietly nurtured some of America's most formidable minds. There she studied under Drive W. W. Schieffelin Clater, a mathematician who recognized her exceptional ability and created advanced courses specifically to challenge her. Clater insisted that Johnson pursue a career in research mathematics a radical suggestion in an era when black women were largely funneled into teaching or domestic work. His faith in her potential was not misplaced. What he saw was not only talent, but the rare capacity to translate abstract mathematics into practical, operational solutions. After a brief period teaching, Johnson joined the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, known as NACA, in 1953. At the time, NACA was a federal agency tasked with advancing aeronautical research. They relied heavily on human computers, skilled mathematicians who performed complex calculations by hand. Johnson was assigned to the West Area Computing Unit, an all-black, all-female group segregated by policy and custom. Though physically separated from their white counterparts, these women formed a critical backbone of federal research, producing data that shaped aircraft design, flight safety, and eventually space exploration. Segregation was not subtle. Johnson had to walk half a mile to use a colored restroom. She was excluded from meetings where key engineering decisions were discussed, even though her calculations informed those decisions. Reports she worked on were often published without her name. Yet Johnson did not retreat into silence. She asked questions. She challenged assumptions. She insisted on understanding the full context of her work, not merely performing calculations in isolation. Over time, her insistence on intellectual inclusion became impossible to ignore. The transformation of NACA into the National Aeronautics and Space Administration in 1958 marked the birth of a new federal program, NASA, charged with executing the United States' response to the Soviet Union's advances in space. This was not a symbolic endeavor. It was a massive, federally funded mobilization of scientific knowledge, engineering, and data-driven decision-making. At the heart of this enterprise were trajectories, launch windows, re-entry paths, and orbital mechanics. These were not abstract ideas. They were matters of life and death, national prestige, and geopolitical power. And they depended entirely on accurate data. Katherine Johnson's work became central to this federal mission. She specialized in analytic geometry and celestial navigation, translating physical laws into mathematical frameworks that engineers could trust. Her calculations determined how spacecraft would enter orbit, where they would land, and how they could return safely to Earth. 
In an era before digital computers were fully trusted, Johnson's hand-calculated data served as the gold standard against which machine outputs were verified. One of the most pivotal moments in her career came during Project Mercury, NASA's first human spaceflight program. When astronaut John Glenn prepared to orbit the Earth in 1962, newly installed electronic computers generated the flight trajectory. Glenn, aware of the risks and wary of untested technology, famously requested that Katherine Johnson personally verify the numbers. If she says they're good, he reportedly said, then I'm ready to go. Johnson recalculated the entire trajectory by hand, confirming the computer's results. Only after her approval did the mission proceed. This moment was more than an anecdote. It symbolized the extraordinary trust placed in Johnson's data and underscored her role in building NASA's operational credibility. Her calculations did not merely support the space program. They defined it. The success of Project Mercury, followed by Gemini and Apollo, rested on a foundation of mathematical certainty that Johnson helped construct. The federal space program was not built solely in launch pads and laboratories, but in notebooks filled with equations written by a black woman whose name few Americans knew at the time. As NASA expanded, Johnson's contributions grew in scope and complexity. She co-authored technical papers that shaped mission planning and spacecraft design, becoming one of the first women in the flight research division to receive author credit. Her work influenced rendezvous techniques used in the Apollo missions, enabling lunar module docking procedures that were essential for landing astronauts on the moon and returning them safely. These techniques were not theoretical exercises. They were operational protocols embedded in the Federal Space Program's architecture. The importance of Johnson's data extended beyond individual missions. It informed NASA's institutional knowledge, shaping training programs, engineering standards, and long-term planning. Her calculations became reference points, embedded in the agency's methodologies. In this way, Johnson's work did not merely support a federal program. It helped build one, defining how NASA approached problem-solving and risk assessment. Yet despite her centrality to the space program, Johnson remained largely invisible to the public for decades. This invisibility was not accidental. It reflected broader patterns in American history where black intellectual labor was routinely marginalized, obscured, or attributed to institutions rather than individuals. Johnson's experience mirrored that of many black researchers whose data underpinned federal initiatives, from public health to defense, without public acknowledgement. What sets Johnson apart is not only the scale of her contribution, but the clarity with which it illustrates the relationship between data and power. Federal programs are often discussed in terms of policy and funding, but they are built on research, on the painstaking accumulation and interpretation of data. Johnson's calculations transformed abstract ambition into executable reality. Without accurate trajectories, there would have been no orbits, no moon landings, no iconic images of Earth from space. The federal space program would have remained an idea rather than an achievement. Johnson's career also reveals how federal institutions have historically depended on black expertise while simultaneously restricting black advancement. She navigated a workplace structure by segregation, where her brilliance was indispensable, but her presence was often contested. Her success did not dismantle these structures overnight, but exposed their irrationality. Each correct calculation, each successful mission, undermined the logic of exclusion. In later years, as digital computers became dominant, Johnson continued to contribute, adapting her expertise to new technologies. She worked on the Space Shuttle program and on plans for missions to Mars, demonstrating that her value was not tied to a single era or method. Her intellectual flexibility reinforced the enduring relevance of her data-driven approach. Recognition came slowly. In 2015, President Barack Obama awarded Katherine Johnson the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the nation's highest civilian honor. The moment was deeply symbolic. A federal government that had once segregated her now publicly acknowledged that its most ambitious scientific program had been built in part on her work. Popular awareness grew further with the publication and film adaptation of Hidden Figures, 
which introduced millions to Johnson's story. Yet even this recognition arrived late, after decades of quiet contribution. Understanding Johnson as the black American researcher whose data built a federal program is not an exercise in exaggeration. It is an acknowledgement of how foundational her work was to NASA's success. Her calculations were not peripheral. They were central, embedded in the very structure of the space program. The rockets, the capsules, the missions, all relied on the integrity of the data she produced. Her story challenges conventional narratives about innovation and leadership. It reminds us that federal programs are not built solely by administrators and visionaries, but by researchers whose names may never appear in headlines. It also forces a reckoning with the ways race and gender have shaped whose contributions are remembered and whose are forgotten. Katherine Johnson's legacy is not only a matter of historical correction. It is a lesson in how knowledge functions within power structures. Data is not neutral. It is generated by people, shaped by institutions, and mobilized towards specific ends. Johnson's data served a federal program that projected American power into space, but her life also reveals the contradictions within that power, how a nation could reach the moon while denying full equality to those who made the journey possible. In the end, Johnson's story is one of quiet revolution. Without marches or manifestos, she altered the course of history through precision, persistence, and intellectual rigor. The Federal Space Program stands as a monument not only to technological achievement, but to the often unseen black researchers whose data transformed national ambition into measurable success. Katherine Johnson did not simply calculate trajectories. She mapped a path through exclusion toward excellence, leaving behind a legacy written not only in equations, but in the enduring arc of human possibility.